Welcome to the Generational Awakening YouTube channel. Our aim is to encourage, equip, and empower Christian leaders and parents to effectively nurture the next generation, become resilient, lifelong disciples of Jesus. Today, we welcome our special guest, Matthew Ling. Pastor Matthew Ling was the senior pastor of a church in Malaysia for 20 years before stepping down at the end of 2013 to focus entirely on serving the church body and family ministry. Matthew led the family track of the Transform World Movement for seven years, from 2012 to 2019. He also led Family Challenge in the Family Discipleship Ministry development of the Global Network of Alliance, National Alliances of the World Evangelical Alliance. And this was from 2016 until the end of last year. He remains an active member of its leadership team. Present, the primary fo ministry focus of Matthew is serving the church body in developing the family discipleship culture. He provides training programs and coaches church leaders in such a culture development process. A certified family life educator and a professional member of the National Council of Family Relations in the US, he is also a licensed trainer with the Family Friendly Pastors Network Ministry of Michigan, USA. Married to Rose for over 45 years, they have two married sons and are grandparents to one granddaughter. Welcome, Matthew, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Brad Harry, for extending the invitation to Family Challenge uh, to be a part of your degenerational awakening ministry. Uh, we commend you highly for investing your life and resources in this crucial focus on encouraging, equipping, and empowering families and churches to raise resilient, lifelong disciples. Thank you for giving us the opportunity uh, to join your video series. Well, we understand that the overall mission of Family Challenge is to partner with the church body in developing effective family discipleship as an integral part of their corporate discipleship structure. In short, you focus on rallying the church body to disciple their members to carry out discipleship at home. The message to the church is we must act to disciple the homes in the church with urgency. This is a strong call and challenge to the church body. Why is this so, Matthew? Thank you for that great question. We are reaching out to the uh, church body and our focal uh, message to them is we must act to disciple the homes in a church with urgency. You know, to answer your question, uh, let's, let us look at the parts of this message to the whole church, to the leadership, as well as to the congregation. First, uh, we call the church to give due attention to specifically the homes in the church, the homes of our leaders and members. You know, we commonly look at the people coming to our church as individuals or groups of individuals who come to church together. We don't usually uh, see them as members coming out of their homes to which we would direct our ministry focus. In fact, um, we have been keeping relatively quiet in the church regarding how we live at home. Unless they are confronted with issues they have to deal with, uh, the church leadership also does not usually talk a lot about it either. So we, even when we do talk about the home, we tend to stay clear from touching on the so-called sensitive issues, uh, those sensitive areas such as marriage, marriage and sexuality, home leadership, uh, finance, and so on. As a result, our congregation settles into the mindset that what happens at home is something we have to deal with ourselves, often not knowing exactly what God requires of us uh, to do practically. In all, you know, there is a strong culture somehow in regard to what happens 
in the homes of our leaders and our members. You know, Family Challenge has been conducting straw polls uh, over the years at major global and regional gatherings of church leaders, leaders who were involved in leading thousands of churches, both in the West and in the East, concerning their views on family discipleship. You know, one question we asked was, how much emphasis do you think the church is giving to building healthy families in their midst? 79% of those leaders we, we surveyed indicated that they gave very little or some to this emphasis. Another question was, how much does the church intentionally equip the parents in passing on the faith to the children all ages at home? 86% of the leaders surveyed answered with very little or some. You may find some uh, more information on our surveys at the web, web link. Home matters a lot to the church and its members. Above all, home matters a lot to God. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 9. Psalm 78, 2 to 8. Ephesians 5, 22 to chapter 6, verse 4. And other scriptures tell us that home is very close to the heart of God. He intentionally creates the home for the specific purpose of playing a key role in building his kingdom on earth. Home is God's key environment for one to grow as a disciple of Christ. Apostle Paul states in Ephesians 5.21 that a critical place where a disciple develops the life of honor Christ and put others first is in the home. That is the place where they learn, where the life of a disciple is shaped in this manner. He mentions five or, or rather seven areas of home life where this shaping of life occurs. You know, Apostle Paul also tells us that home is a crucial training ground to prepare one for ministry at church in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 4 to 5. Genesis 18, 18 to 19. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 9. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 18 to 20. And Ephesians 6, 4 tell us that believing parents, those parents coming, members of our church, believing parents are called by God to be primarily responsible for a spiritual training of the children at home, not the church. Home is a critical environment which God uses for the effective transmission of faith or intergenerational kingdom building for one generation to the next. Well, these are very convincing theological truths, Matthew. But is there empirical research done to support these? Yes, there is an abundant body of research findings to support this. We don't have the time to cover much uh, of this here. For instance, uh, empirical research has consistently affirmed the importance of the home in faith development. Take for an example, the report of American Catholic religious parenting has this to say, the crucial location where youth's religious outcomes are largely decided not uh, the congregation or the parish, but the home. This is the location. Home is the location. John Roberto, the founder of Lifelong Faith Associates, has this to say about the powerful influence parents have on the religious life of their children in his article, Pandering with Parents to Nurture Family Faith, Insights from Research. This is what he says. At the heart of all research, is the finding that the most important influence shaping the religious and spiritual lives of children and youth is the parents. 
The overwhelming evidence from the research studies shows that the parents of American youth play the leading role in shaping the character of their religious and spiritual lives, even well after they leave home and often for the rest of their lives. Home really is a key God-appointed player in the discipleship of the whole church, leaders, and members alike. You know, just, just imagine, just imagine the tremendous impacts on God's kingdom when the home is equipped and released to function in such a role. Wonderful. Well, we have covered the big whys and the importance of the home. But what are some of the whys that the church specifically must pay attention to? You know, family discipleship is not just crucial for the homes of our members. It is vitally essential for the church as well. First, the church that does that, meaning that carrying out the family discipleship in the midst, fulfills one important biblical function of its creation, disciple-making of its members. This is one of the core callings of the church. Biblically functional homes, biblically functional homes in a church make strong disciples of leaders and members alike who make good disciples of others. Again, imagine the impact this has on the emotional and spiritual vitalities um, of the church in the long run. In fact, the church that disciples the home is the church that fulfills the great commission call of God in disciple making. You know, I would just continuously marvel if we could just do this. What a tremendous impact it will be when we could mobilize the church to take up its role as the equipping center that train its members to carry out the discipleship ministry systematically and holistically at home. What a different church life <laughs> it will be when that happens to see marriage life, parenting, intergenerational faith transmission, sexuality, faith, uh, family resource management, and so on, thrive within a highly supportive Christian community. Home really matters to God. What is urgently needed? A church actively involved in building biblically functional homes as a way of life. We know, we know the satanic attack on the family started right from the moment of its creation in the Garden of Eden. It never ceased. We all observe the damaging struggles that the family in our church have been experiencing. This comes in many forms, marriage breakdowns, ineffective parenting, failing intergeneration faith development, harmful sexuality, and other crucial areas of home life. Let us be upfront. Let us be very upfront. I think this is something that we need to recognize and be frank about what we are facing. Let us be upfront with the situation we face in the church. We are facing a deep family crisis. This is a big elephant in the room. You know, many of us would choose to ignore this elephant by not talking about it at all. You know, we can talk about worship, prayer, Bible reading, fellowship, and so on in the church setting. But as far as the home is concerned, we just keep away from that subject matter. We see the apparent disconnect between what happens in the church and at home. Because of this lack of family discipleship in the church, the homes of both our leaders and members are often left to fend for themselves in the battles of home life. The attack ravaged homes weaken their church ministry impacts. I think it's very clear. One consequence to note is their reduced capacity for disciple making. This is very serious for a church body. 
You know the question that the psalmist asked in Psalm 11 verse 3 is the point of question we must seriously ask ourselves. The Psalm 11, Psalm 11 verse 3 says this, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? When our foundation in the church, the families in our churches continues to collapse, what future is there really for us? The question, we must address this question honestly. Yes, Matthew, I, I agree absolutely entirely with you know, all you've been sharing. And indeed, we are in a serious state of life in the church and the home at the present with our lack of attention given to family discipleship. Well, what's next? Uh, family challenge in your response to this, what are you proposing to us today? We, I think that first of all, we cannot ignore the elephant in the room any longer. We must talk ab about it. We must just, just end uh, with just talking about it. We must act on it. We must not limit our response to just conducting a program or two to try to fix the family problems at hand. This can be a part of the solution, of course. But we must not stop there. You see, it is not just about informing or the transfer of information, but also about how we apply what we learn in our home life. I think the truth of the matter is this. The family crisis is in essence a whole church discipleship crisis in the arena of the home. It is a whole church crisis. It's not just about home issues. Therefore, any response are to a family crisis in the church must consider how we could develop discipleship life both in the church as an equipping center and at home where actual discipleship takes place. Because of such an acute lack of emphasis on family discipleship in the church at present, there is much to do to bring it to the appropriate priority level in the church ministry environment. We must not only act to disciple the homes in the church, we must act on it with urgency. And we all know this. The church has been experiencing very serious impacts of the lack of such discipleship for a long time. We have all witnessed the devastating consequences of the neglect of this in the church body in many parts of the world. We are not just losing the future generations to the world. We are losing the present generation of Christ followers as a result of that crucial missing piece of the discipleship of life in the church and at home. This is our message. We must act to disciple the homes in the church with urgency. We must act to disciple the homes in the church with urgency. We need every church member to be developed to lead a godly life development center at home with the church actively being the godly home training center. Yes, indeed. And I see Family Challenge is not the only ministry seeking to help the homes to thrive and, and to succeed in the purposes God has for us. And well, who else do you think needs to be part of this journey that we're taking with God to see our families and churches transformed? This is a great question. It's a question <laughs> touching my heart. We know we are not the only one carrying in our hearts this uh, message of the, the need to urgently reach out to the uh, church body, to engage them, to build strong homes. You know, we, we know we are not the only ones. Uh, many share with us the same conviction of the central role that home plays uh, in the success of the ministries. We know the Global Children's Forum needs the family to be strong. We know One for 50, World Vision, Compassion International, Here to Stay, One Hope, 
hope for the next generation, work with their orphans, 414 window, and many thousands of other ministries and individuals that need the family to be functional in order to carry on their ministries. You see, it is not the task of just one or a few of us to reach the church body for family discipleship development. development. This is a huge task. We need to come together to face this monumental task in front of us. You know, I just calling all of us, all of us, we are calling all of us to come together to collaborate, to explore opportunities in serving the global church community in that manner. And I would love to hear from you. Please contact us. Are you seeing the contact information at the end of this video? Yes, well, thank you, Matthew. And certainly in this interview, we have covered a fair bit of ground on the whys of family discipleship and the urgency of building this culture in the church and also the call to come together to work on it. Now, I want to, to ask you about what Family Challenge specifically does in the building of family discipleship in the church. We have two main tasks. Uh, in our mission to partner with the church body in developing effective family discipleship as an integral part of the corporate discipleship structure. Our first task, uh, which is we spend a lot of energy uh, uh, in uh, on, is, is really our, is to create church-wide awareness and a sense of urgency. Um, you, know, you may visit our website uh, for more information on this. That is the place where we focus a lot in on all these years. Our second task is planning and developing, uh, planning for and developing the family discipleship culture in the church. Um, we train uh, master trainers uh, in the Let God Build Our Homes program, basically a program that uh, is covering uh, 24 months. Uh, those 24 months, um, that process consists of uh, classes, um, teaching the whys and the hows and the what, what of uh, family discipleship. How do we bring about the culture change uh, so that uh, family discipleship culture becomes an integral part of the culture of the church? The first part is just uh, uh, teaching sessions. Then the, that would usually last about six months to seven months. And then with the remaining time of the two-year period, uh, we spend time into, into putting what we learn into practice. And uh, it consists of small group uh, family discipleship experiences and uh, designing and implementing the new culture change process uh, with, with a plan, as a practical plan uh, for the church. Well, there's certainly a lot to do, that's for sure. And we do need to see the urgency. We do need to see the importance of investing time, investing resources in our families and in our communities to really move forward and, and really live out you know, the, the incredible model that God has for us as families and as churches and communities so we can be really much more effectively light and salt in the world today. Well, as we conclude, Matthew, what final call to action do you have for us, for those who are listening? We have one message. The call is, to, let's come together. Let's come together. Let's come together to disciple the homes in the church and give it the kind of urgency uh, that all of us need. We need the home to be functional. Let's come together. Amen. Together we can, together with God we can. We yeah. can do all that he has expressed as his desire to do. And if we will just be united and kingdom-minded, servant-hearted, you know, God will do incredible things through us and through Amen. our families, through our churches. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Matthew, for being with us and for the strategic insights and challenges you've given us today. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the great work you are doing, Abra Harry. Well, you mentioned some websites and resources, contact details, so people will be able to find them below this video. And mm -hmm. uh, really, we encourage you to, to look at them and see you know, how you can be using these from today onward. And 
If you have found value in what we have shared today, I invite you to like this video and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be informed of each new video released. Let us know in the comments below what you have found most helpful or encouraging and any questions you may have for myself or for Matthew. Then share the link with friends and churches who would also be helped and inspired. Together, let's impact many more lives for good, many more families, many more churches across all the generations. So thank you for joining us today. Be blessed and let's keep multiplying the blessing to others. Bye for now.